Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds, number 52. So today is a one year anniversary for this show. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it, I sure am. This is where I like to collect together all the new music from the past week and present it to you. And of course I get it from uh, local record stores but also online retail like Amazon, eBay and more. And for this past week, I've got 10 new music finds to go through with you four new releases, two that come from a band website, and four from my local record store. But before we dive into all of that, if you are new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with New Music Finds, episode number 52, our one year anniversary. All right, so kicking things off as we always do, uh, we are starting with new releases that just came out this past Friday, February 11th. There are four of them, and the big one that came out that everyone was talking about, the brand new Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators, album number four, simply called number four. This is a super deluxe edition, but well, I should say just deluxe edition box set because there is a separate super deluxe edition box set, but this one here is the CD edition of it. And um, so as I mentioned, fourth studio album, the uh, whole thing was recorded live in the studio and they did a really cool thing where they actually filmed the album recorded live in its entirety and then broadcast it or streamed it on Friday, the day of its release. Still up on YouTube if you wanna check it out. But I have to say, when I first heard the album, I enjoyed it didn't immediately click with me. Then I watched the live performance and with every watch of the performance, the album really, really grew on me. So the idea that this album was recorded live in the studio, I think really brings it across much better seeing all of the guys perform it live. It's um, really a live recording just done in a studio, but getting to see that really kind of uh, emphasized that feel to the album and so forth. So I really enjoyed that. And I would recommend you guys check that out if you haven't already. But um, the, the box set itself is a very cool thing. It's a um, clamshell style, which is kind of odd for being this big. Usually that's only the square ones. But it opens like that and it's got a lot of goodies in it. You can see there's stuff like a, a patch and and the poster that's there and a guitar pick that comes in it and then you've got a book that's under here and then the cd is in this right but there's also this cassette that's in here as well that uh, is a live rehearsal tape kind of an interesting thing i wish they had put it on a cd for us and or bonus tracks even to the end of the cd because the cd itself is uh I think somewhere around the 45 minute mark and it easily could have um, you know, been on there sort of a thing, but they didn't and uh, that's how we're getting it. So a lot of cool stuff though within that. That box set's about 35 bucks, so totally worthwhile. The album itself I've done a full review of, which I'll leave a link in the description below, but uh, I'm really, really enjoying the album now. As I said, it took a little bit to warm up to it, so if you guys aren't immediately connecting with it, give the album a little bit of time. Maybe it will grow on you too. All right, next up as new release, uh, Eddie Vedder, Earthling. So third solo album from Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam Frontman. Uh, this thing here is a... Uh, well, it turned out to be a good album. I, I have to say, I wasn't really holding my breath on the album itself, but uh, listen to this. So first of all, it's produced by Andrew Watt. Andrew Watt, maybe you recognize the name because he produced the last Ozzy Osbourne album. He currently is producing the new Ozzy Osbourne album. And if you're a fan of Glenn Hughes and liked California Breed, then Andrew Watt was the guitar player in that band. Now, of course, he's gone on to do a lot of other things like producing Miley Cyrus and uh, Post Malone and several other artists that uh, we're not really interested in here, but it just shows uh, sort of the depths of which uh, this guy can work within. But what's also interesting is the band. So you get um, Andrew Watt on guitar and bass. You also get Josh Klinghoffer on guitar, former Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist. And then you get current Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer, Chad Smith. So in essence, you kind of get half of the Chili Peppers on this. So 
cool backing band for all of the tracks on here. And then there's a number of guests on here. You get Elton John, Ringo Starr, Stevie Wonder, Ben Tinch of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So again, very cool backing band, some very cool guests on here. Now the music that's on here is somewhat different than a standard Pearl Jam Fair sort of stuff, but it's definitely within the vein of what Eddie Vedder does. If you followed his career, past two solo releases as well as his soundtrack recordings then this stuff is really within that vein but there's a number of throwback feeling songs in here that are reminiscent of Pearl Jam Fair and stuff like that that I think if you're a fan of Pearl Jam you're a fan of Eddie Vedder I think you will really enjoy this album and it is worth checking out so again there is a, a full review for that which I'm going to leave a link in the description too Here's one that I didn't know was coming out until only a couple weeks before and was really surprised when I found out about it. Urge Overkill, We, seventh studio album from the Alternative Rockers. So these guys uh, kind of really became famous from having a song in, um, you know, on a movie soundtrack. And the song was uh, Neil Diamond, um, Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. So that song, you know, which was in Pulp Fiction, that was the movie really kind of broke the band and then unfortunately they didn't really catch on much after that but very good band in my opinion i really enjoyed this album here which again i didn't have a lot of uh sort of high hopes for but this one is uh now being 11 years after their last album rock and roll submarine from 2011 but if you're a fan of them i say it's worth checking out Okay, and the final new release was Voivod's Synchro Anarchy 15th studio album from the Canadian uh, metal or thrash metal band. And again, that one's pretty good. So, um, there, you know, Voivod's one of those bands that I, I sort of follow for a while and then maybe a couple of releases go by and then I catch up and then so forth. And for me, a lot of it is if I'm in the mood of thrash, then sometimes I'll hunt back and pull stuff and so forth. And uh, if you've been watching some of my um, What's That You're Listening To episodes and things, you know that for the last couple of weeks I have been on a 90s metal and thrash metal kick and so forth. So it was actually perfect timing that the Voivod came out and uh, I just ordered it right up and uh, sat right with me when it came out. So good album. Do recommend it if you're a fan of Voivod um, or you're looking for some interesting thrash metal because they're on the more what I call technical thrash, techno thrash. Uh, stuff because they're almost like progressive metal uh, in how they play things. All right, uh, next thing to talk about is one that came from uh, the band's website, although it is technically a new release, Guns N' Roses Hard School EP. First new material from these guys since Chinese Democracy, so 14 years ago, but it's the first new recordings with Axel Slash and Duff in 29 years. So. Pretty big deal behind this, in my opinion. I really, really like the song Hard School. The uh, second track that's on here, Absurd, not so much. Not that I don't like it, it's just that song and the way that it was done, uh, you know, just didn't really click with me. Not the way that Hard School did. Now, I have to say that I've really warmed up to Absurd, and so at least hearing Hard School roll right into Absurd. And then on the EP, it's got two live tracks. So it's got Don't Cry and You're Crazy. And what's really cool about You're Crazy is that it is a slowed down version like the acoustic version, except done electric. And if you know anything about the song, the original version of You're Crazy, which is off of Appetite for Destruction, was not that fast the way they play it on the album. It was actually done more like uh, the version that's on Lies. And so here we finally get to hear that version. They've recorded it and it's really, really good. So something else, a little bonus if you're picking this up. And I also picked up the cassette edition of this. Kind of cool, it's done uh, like the old school cassette single style in the cardboard sleeve and so forth. So I picked those up off of the Guns N' Roses website. So this EP here is not available in storage. You can't go to Amazon. You've got to head over to the band's website to pick it up. But good news, uh, Slash has uh, come out recently saying that he does believe the band is going to record an album. They will continue to release new material like this and eventually gather it up for an album. He's now said that a couple times. So hopefully that is something that is really happening and uh, we won't have to wait too long for that. 
All right, then I made a trip to my local uh, rec used record store, I should say, Book Off, a uh, fantastic place. Again, if you don't know it, uh, it's definitely worth checking out or exploring. These places have wall-to-wall -wall CDs in them, always good stuff to find. I did make a, um, an experience video of it, so uh, that was posted yesterday, but I'll leave a link in the description in case uh, that's easier for you to click on. And so the first thing that I found there was Vinnie Moore Meltdown, 1991 third solo album from him. Um, good find for me. This one here is hard to come by. I've actually never seen it used before. And, um, you know, Vinnie Moore, if that name sounds familiar, comes from other bands right now, currently, of course, with UFO, but he came from Vicious Rumors, which is a power metal band. He also played with Alice Cooper um, as part of the Hey Stupid album. So he's been around, he's done a lot of things, but he was originally a uh, shred metal guitarist. And this album here, uh, lead uh, title track off here, um, Meltdown was played heavily on Headbangers Ball, so you might recognize it the same way uh, I do. All right, next thing I found was uh, one that I already owned, but I didn't have an original copy of it. John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band, Roadhouse from 1988, which is their second studio album uh, following the soundtrack from Eddie and the Cruisers, because that's where this band is known from. They're the ones that wrote and perform all the music from the Eddie and the Cruisers uh, two movie soundtracks. And so they then had an album that came out after an original album, Tough All Over, followed by this Roadhouse. So if you like those movies like I did, I grew up on those and just loved those movies. When I found out that the band that had performed that music was a real band and they had their own albums out, that was just, you know, icing on the cake to me. And, uh, you know, totally bringing back childhood memories with that. All right, next thing that I found, 60s rockers love in their second album, De Capo, from 1966. Um, another band out of the 60s, like The Doors, that I really like. And of interesting note, Paul Rothschild uh, produces the album itself. And um, a number of uh, key, you know, Doors people, um, person who mixes the album, stuff like that, have worked with The Doors. So if you're interested in uh, The Doors and The Doors sound, um, the first couple albums by Love definitely have that feel to it, in my opinion. Definitely worth checking out. That was one there that I didn't have. I've got a couple of the other ones out of print. So a lot of these uh, albums, at least those first three, were all out of print. This one, this last one, not so much, uh, but still something I decided to take a chance on it. I'm really glad I did. Share Heart of Stone from 1989, 19th studio album from her. And... Um, the reason why uh, I told this story in the um, the end of the record store experience video, but my mom had this on cassette and I always really enjoyed it. I didn't really know why I enjoyed it. What I came to find out though is that the production and songwriters and things of that nature, it's Desmond Child, Diane Warren, John Bon Jovi, Richie Sambora, people like that, people that I really respect that are songwriters that have written for other people that I really enjoy. And so we get a ton of it on here. So now it's all kind of making sense why I like this album as much as I did. It wasn't just uh, something that because I heard it a number of times or so forth, but uh, it's really grown on me. And of course, bringing back good memories again, having that something that uh, from 1989, you know, when I actually started collecting, which was in 89, so 33 years ago, coming full circle and actually getting that finally for the first time. Uh, you know, interesting to now have that in the collection when for me, I've always seen the artist share as someone that my mom listens to, but this album in particular, really good. And I haven't explored it yet, but uh, she recorded three albums for Geffen Records, which this one was the middle one. So there's one album before, one album after it that are all done in the same vein. And I do plan to hunt those down as well. Because if they're anything like this, then uh, totally worth having. And there you go. That is uh, 10 new music finds as part of episode number 52, our one year anniversary here. And uh, as I mentioned, I will leave links to those related videos in the description. The one for the Guns N' Roses Hard School EP slash Eddie Vedder and the Book Off Record Store Experience video. All of those are there for you to check out if you want to check those out. And certainly if you've enjoyed this video, consider sharing it out on social media. I would greatly appreciate that. All right, everyone, have a good day, take care, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.